Hello, my friend. Welcome back to another video. My name is Tammy, and this is Tammy Anderson Art. I think it is anyway, maybe. I hope I'm in the right place. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to step in to say thank you for all of the love and support over the last couple of weeks. I've had a really hard time with my kitty cat, but she's doing much better, and therefore, I am doing much better. You know, she's these cats are like kids to me, and if one goes down, I go down with them. You know, it's just how it is. I'm an animal lover. I always have been, always will be. Although I don't like snakes for some reason. They just, I don't wish any ill will, but I just don't like snakes. Anyway, today I'm going to try to do something different, and we're going to see how it goes. Now, I'm not saying this is how it's going to be all the time. Just this one time, I'm going to try it and see what the response That's awesome. <laughs> oh. Only me. I swear. Only me. So anyway... I'm trying to keep it together. Bear with me. I'm trying not to go into a laughing fit. Who's Okay. So, today I'm going to do two projects. One video, one acrylic, one resin. If you don't want to watch one or the other, if you go to the description of the video, you're going to see some little blue numbers with almost like a book, chapters. So, if you see at 15 minutes resin starts and you're only here to see resin you could click on that 15 minute right in the description the blue number click right on it and it'll zip you right to that portion of the video it's a really cool feature so if you don't want to see one or the other or you want to know you watch the whole video and you forgot to write down the colors i used i'll have that in there you could click on it it'll take you right to that portion of the video where I describe the colors. It's really, really cool feature. It's called the timestamp feature. So I'm gonna have that there. We're going to do two things, an acrylic pour and a really quick resin piece that I've been working on. It's a sea turtle and I'm using this paper that you are not going to want to miss. It is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And let me show you a sample. So this is a mermaid tail that I did using the paper I'm going to be using in the video today. Look how beautiful that is. This is available for sale, by the way. I just have to finish the sides in the back, but it is available if you're interested. It is absolutely gorgeous. And you can see from the side, hopefully, how much resin is on there. <laughs> it's a lot of resin. So I gotta finish up those sides and do the back, but it will be for sale. So anyway, let me show you how the last resin piece came out and then we will start the video. So here is that piece. It is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> It needs one more coat of resin and I gotta fill the clam shells up the rest of the way, but they are, it, I just absolutely love this piece. The shimmer. And more importantly, the uniqueness of it. And then I just wanted to show you this outside. How beautiful that is. And one last thing, I am now taking commission orders for resin trays. Here is one that I did for a client. We do the amber agate theme. So you see that the, the I did the bleeding technique here to get those colors to bleed in under the white. It's really, really pretty. 
custom handles. So if you're interested in something like this or a charcuterie board, I have some of those. I'll actually be showing one of those tomorrow's video. Um, oh, I just love it. Love it all. Okay, enough. Let's get started. Okay, so up first, acrylic pouring. Acrylic pouring, mixing paint, it does not need to be scary. It is very simple. Now, there's been some confusion uh, since this bloom technique has come out and people are asking me, uh, I know what your paints are, but are you using house paint on the canvas? What are you doing? So here's something to remember. Unless you are doing a bloom style painting, and I will show you that. Here's a prime example of a bloom painting. Do you see how the, the cells are all concentrated in one area? of the painting versus this Dutch pour. See how there are cells all throughout the painting? That is what differs. What differs is, is for a typical acrylic pour, when you're using Floetrol, you're using the Floetrol in all the colors, whereas with the Bloom painting, you are using house paints and Floetrol in only one white or black. Some people do other colors. They call it the cell activator. So for your typical acrylic pouring that we're going to be doing today, we are doing the old school, original way of acrylic pouring. Here's another example of using the ingredients of a bloom technique. Okay, you can see that the cells the pattern it's more clustered this was done with primary elements by the way look at how beautiful this is no joke those are the best product in the world I absolutely love them but you can see the difference in the patterns so for typical acrylic pouring where you're doing a Dutch pour a ring pour a string pull whatever flip cup whatever you want what I'm going to do right now is what you should be doing. No house paint involved. The white paint on my canvas will be acrylic paint. And that is what I have in here. This is Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White. And I just want to show you how easy it is. A lot of people fret over measurements. I dumped some paint into this big McDonald's cup or Taco Bell, sorry, up to here. Okay. Okay. The amount of flow trawl that you add does not matter. You could literally squeeze in a little tiny bit and use it just to get some cells in your painting and be done. Or you can use as much paint that you have, you can use that much flow trawl to make a larger batch. Now, Floetrol does extend drying time, stuff like that, but I don't mind that. So now you see I added as much Floetrol as I did paint in there. I didn't measure. You would mix it up then. And now this is how you do all of your colors. You can add a little bit. You can add a lot. Just remember, the less of this you use, the more water you're going to have to use and if you are not using better quality paints like I am, your pigments will break down. They cannot handle that much water. Um, I'll use, let's see, who does paint and water only? Rinse Kadauna. She uses paint and water only, but she's using fine quality paints. So her paints can handle all that water. If you take something like a deco art paint and add a ton of water into it, it's not going to be able to withstand all of that and the pigments will break apart and it's not a good thing. So I put the flow trawl in there. Now it's still pretty thick, but it's running. 
So I'll go ahead and I'll add about a teaspoon worth of water. And I will mix it up. And since I'm not doing the Dutch pour, I want the normal consistency for acrylic pouring, which is it flows off the stick, it leaves a little mound on the surface, and then it disappears pretty quickly. Now I will say these soft body paints that I use by Liquitex, which by the way, I have to thank Cherry Adler for sending me one of the colors off of my wish list. I absolutely love this color. It's muted turquoise. Cherry, thank you so, so, so much. That was so kind of you. Um, what I was going to say is these mixed with the Floetrol actually make the perfect consistency for your normal non-Dutch pour acrylic pourings. And I keep saying non-Dutch pour because Dutch pour is just very thin. It's not like other acrylic pours. So this is still pretty thick. So I know I'm going to add another teaspoon to tablespoon worth of water. And I'm going to continue to do that until I get it to the matching consistency of these colors. With these colors, what I did, these are very pigmented, so you don't need the 50-50 ratio. I put a tablespoon, um, about almost a tablespoon, not even, of paint in that cup, and then I filled it up almost three quarters of the way with Floetrol, and you can see how vibrant they are. And I'll show you the consistency of them, and this is what I need, my white to match. Now, I was watching Dirty Artist, and on that channel, that's actually, they did a, a loom pour, which I'm going to do today with you guys, showed an amazing tip for when to know when your acrylic pour paint is at the right consistency. And what that tip was is let the paint flow off the stick, and if it bounces up and down, See right there, bouncing up and down. That's the right consistency for a typical acrylic pour. It's got that bounce. I thought that tip was genius. So Dirty Artist, thank you for that one. So anyway, that's what that consistency is. And now we need to get this to the same spot. Okay. It's flowing, it's flowing. Is it bouncing? Not really, still a little too thick. So we'll add a little more. That was about a tablespoon. Once you do this over and over, you can do it with your eyes closed. You can feel with the stick back and forth what the right consistency is and uh, you'll get it. Just keep practicing. So now I know that's perfect. So for my colors, I'm going to tell you really quick what they are. Again, they are mixed with Floetrol only because they didn't need any water. Uh, so a tablespoon of the color to, I would say these are five ounce cups, three ounces of Floetrol. But again, these are better quality paints so you, have to, you can use less of them. If you're using a deco art paint, then it would be more of like a 50-50 mixture. Um, so we have muted turquoise, vivid lime green, green deep permanent, muted green, I love that muted wine, uh, ultramarine blue, phthalo cyanine, blue green shade, and for our contrasting color, we have naphthol crimson. I also mixed up a little bit of this Vallejo Pearl Medium. Um, I love this stuff. It gives some special effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer the paints with this in between, a little bit of white, and we'll see how it goes, okay? So as I said, I'm going to do a loom painting. Not a bloom, a loom. And we are going to use three looms so we can see what kind of patterns we can get out of this painting. 
Okay, I have my white paint put down, and now I'm going to put the first loom right in the center. Now this canvas is only a 14 by 18, so it's kind of small for that size. But that's okay because we have the other two that I'm going to put inside that are also going to lend to the pattern. Now, when I put them in, I'm going to try to have the little pegs not in the same spot as the ones on the first so that it kind of disrupts the pattern and makes it a little wiggly. And the same thing for the third one. We are doing a triple loom. A triple loom. That sounds like fun. Okay, so first color I'm gonna start off with is the pearl medium. And I think what I'll do is I will time lapse you until we get to the tilting part because it's gonna be a lot of layering. Okay, so what I did was I continued to pour them in random order, separating every two to three by white and pearl white, uh, or pearl medium, I should say. I just mixed that on its own. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the looms, and we are going to see what kind of pattern we have here, and then we're going to tilt it. So, very slowly, get those out of here. Try not to let them drip, although that may be impossible at, with this big one, let's see. Okay, that's a cool pattern. So now what we'll do is we will tilt it around, see what we get. It's pretty uh, flowery looking. Oh, you know what? I am almost tempted to try to do a dip with this. Should I do it? Oh, you know what? We're going to do a dip, and if it doesn't turn out right, we'll just tilt it anyway. Okay, I need you to pray for me right now because I'm about to do something really stupid. <laughs> I have a ginormous piece of bubble wrap because I can't find a napkin big enough to do this. Oh, I can only imagine the prop. I have the garbage right next to me. I'm going to torch this and we're going to just go for it, you know, because that's how we roll on this channel. <laughs> oh, this is going to and bad I have a feeling so let's slowly lay it down <laughs> let's tap 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 I don't know if this would be considered the biggest dip to date but I think Fiona probably has some big ones too but hey, girl can dream. <laughs> this is literally a 12 inch puddle of paint. So 12 inch wide diameter. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to say the least. Okay, here we go. So corner to corner. And I'm no professional dipper, so... Don't shoot me if I do something wrong here. The paper wasn't even cut the right way. <laughs> the bubble wrap. You know, we're just gonna go for it and see what happens. I could feel it sliding out of my hand. So I better hurry up.
And I didn't even get the floor. I got over here, but that's fixable. So let's wait and see what happens here. <laughs> that was actually fun. Oh, you should see the cells coming out. That is amazing. See how fast they took care of that splotch? Just dip your finger in it. Make sure when you go to re-dip, you use a clean finger, though. I'll take care of that after. Wow! Holy cow! <laughs> I can't wait to show you guys this. All right, let me get you down. Look at this. This is just amazing. It is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. I love it, I love it. Wow, well, now we have a way to make flowers with looms. <laughs> I really like this a lot. That is, wow. And you know, it's gonna keep developing too. So I'll keep you up to date on this one. But now that was some fun. That was really some fun. I absolutely love it. And I didn't even try like to do the, the skewer uh, to make the leaves or anything like that. I just plopped it down and look at that. That is something else. I think it's fantastic. So that's that. <laughs> Let me show you the resin portion of this video now. If you're not interested in learning about resin or seeing my beautiful sea turtle, then you don't have to watch. You can end the video now, and I will thank you for watching and dealing with the craziness. Um, if you're interested in this piece or that other beautiful bloom piece I just showed you, it's on a 6 by 12 piece of wood. It is absolutely gorgeous. I'll show it to you again really quick. I, I'm just enamored with this. I am in love. And look at that pearl medium, how pretty it is in there. That is really, really pretty. And that pattern should uh, flatten out. Hopefully it'll level out. If not, we'll have a nice texture in the background. And here is that beautiful primary elements piece. It's pretty stunning in person. So if you're interested in any of that, just give me a holla, artbytammy at yahoo.com. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to make the shell. Or if you're doing a different style of piece of uh, a different piece of wood, a shape, and you just want this type of texture on it, you're going to need to get yourself some Tyvek paper. Now, I have this in my Amazon shop. Um, I will link it, try to remember to link it in the description also, but if you click on the link in my description that says my Amazon shop, you click on that, you'll go right to the items that I use in all my videos, and you're going to see this paper listed. So you're going to need some of this paper. You're also going to need something to sandwich the paper in between that retains, not retains it, deflects heat. I'm trying to think of the right word. So you're going to take your piece of paper, you're going to color it with whatever you want, either your acrylic paint, markers, uh, watercolors, in my case, primary elements. Now, if you want to use your primary elements, the way you would do this is primary elements, you either bought them in a kit that came with some polypour or came with some enamel you can also buy these separately on color arts website um you're going to mix a little bit of this powder in with a little bit of this and you're going to brush paint i will demonstrate for you so again i'm going to demonstrate for you you're going to put one of those products doesn't matter which one they will both work the same into the cup and what I did for the turtle shell was I made three different greens and I brush painted them onto the Tyvek paper. So here I'll do some blue. This color is called Meridian Blue.
just like that. And now essentially what you have made here is tube paint, okay? So you've made your own paint. <laughs> That's what primary elements are. They're a dry paint system. So you could blend the powders to make your own custom colors. The enamel that I'm using right here turns it into your paint, okay? If you were to use this with the polypore, what this stuff does is it turns the powder into your ready-to-use pouring paints. So that's the difference between those two products. Mixing the primary elements with this gives you a ready-to-pour onto a canvas type of paint. When you mix it with the enamel, then you need to thin it down with some water to get the thinner consistency to be able to pour. So that's the difference. But anyway, today we're using it for brush painting. And for brush painting, you can use either product. Again, I have a coupon for these colors and for all color art products, Tammy Anderson Art 120. So now we have our paint we made. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a brush or a sponge and let me show you this color. This is a really pretty color. That is meridian blue. Very, very pretty. So you're going to take your colors that you make and you're just going to cover the entire sheet of paper. Okay. I'm not going to do the whole thing because I've already done what I want to do for my shell. So you're going to do that. You're going to let it dry. And by the way, these primary elements, if you let this dry and go over the top with another color and let it dry and do another color, the amount of sparkle and color shifting you get is phenomenal. So now that this is dry, you can see this Tyvek paper. It's a type of fiber paper. You can't rip it. Okay. It's unrippable. And what happens when you apply heat to it, it starts to shrink up. So what you want to do is the side that you colored, you want to put it face down in between two of these heat press sheets, which I also have in my Amazon shop. I think they were like 10 bucks for three or six of them. They weren't expensive at all. And by the way, you can use them for baking too. There's a silicone heat resistant sheet. There's three ways to do this shrinking. Now, you can use an iron, put it on its highest setting, and hover about an inch above the surface. It takes a while for the heat to really start to work, but that's the, the, the slow method if you don't have a heat gun or an embossing tool. You can use an embossing tool, okay? This, I would say, is the medium quickest way to do it. Or you can be impatient like me and use your heat gun, which I'm going to do right now. So you want to move around the whole paper. Um, don't stay in one spot too long because it will melt and you're going to see it start shrinking. Again, it's very important that the color side is down so that when you lift it up out of here, the bubbles will be on the right side. So here we go. Okay, just like that. Now I'm going to mute this so you don't have to hear it. All right, let's rip it up and see what we got here. Is that not cool or what? So you can see the more you heat it, the smaller the texture. And it's just a really cool texture to add to your art pieces. So that's how I made the shell. And I then 
cut it into shape and glued it right onto my piece of wood. And now we're gonna do the next step. Here's a mermaid tail that I'm going to start working on. Now this one I opted not to color yet because I'm going to color it once um, I get my little rest of pieces on and I just, you can color it before or after, it just helps to color it before, but I'm my mind is not made up. I just knew I wanted this texture, but how cool is that? That is going to be a really fun piece, okay? The next thing that I want to do before I start any resin work is I want to put some texture on the head, fins, and tail. So what I thought I would do is use some glass bead gel. Here is the texture of that. And it's actually going to look like the little bumps that are all over the fins of a turtle. Um, this is also in my Amazon shop. And with a palette knife, I'm going to put this on there very liberally to give this guy some texture. Just like so. And then we're going to let it dry. I would say, you know, do this at night time maybe and then let it dry overnight. It should be good in about 12 hours, depending on your climate. So this is going to go over the entire turtle. Not the entire turtle. The exposed parts of the turtle. So there you have it. Now let it sit and dry overnight and we will move on to the next step. So Mr. Turtle is all dry now. Um, I will show you the texture of the glass bead gel. Gives a nice texture and that's going to look like skin if you ask me. So. What I need to do now is paint over. Now you can either use some sprays, some alcohol inks to do the feet. Um, I think that I am going to paint the flippers tail and the head the same as I did the shell using my primary elements. So the three colors I'm going to use will be green tea. Oh, problem focusing there. Green tea, key lime, this one I happen to have, you know what it is, it's the black um, tablecloth, and black emerald, okay? So those are the three colors I'm going to use, and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take some of my Vivid Enamel that you can also buy uh, for the primary elements. When you buy primary elements, you should be getting either some of this or some of the poly pour. So I'm just gonna pour some out into a smaller cup so it's easier for me to handle. So the enamel, and I've said this in, I may have said this at the beginning of this video. I'm doing this over several days, so I kind of forget what I've said. But the enamel, you're going to be using for your brush painting with them. Or you can also thin it down with a little bit of water and use it for your pouring. Or there's also the poly pour, which you can also brush paint with. But this stuff here is blended to the perfect consistency for paint pouring. So literally, you pour some of this into a cup with a little bit of a powder, and then your paint is ready to pour for acrylic pouring. But we're going to use the enamel today. It's a little bit thicker bodied. And three cups. So I don't need much. Uh, 
of each color just a little bit actually I won't even dirty another cup I'll use this and into each cup I'm going to put a little bit of the powder it does not take much to color this that's more than enough going to mix it up and there you go you're ready you've just made your own paint you can blend these colors together to make custom colors um, for example here we'll do one here so I do need a little bit of a lighter one say I wanted this a little bit lighter I can pour just a drop worth of that color into my enamel and then I can put in a little bit of this key lime now I've made a little bit lighter version okay and then Let's just separate this. I don't need much of the black emerald. Just a couple of brushes with that color. So now I can make the key lime on its own. Just a little tiny bit. That's it. And I'm going to show you these colors up close. So you'll notice now this key lime, this is its natural color. Okay, but this was the custom color that I made by blending the green tea with the key lime. So they're, they're really fun to play with. Here's the green tea. And last, but definitely not least, do a little tiny speck of that black emerald in there. And then, like I said, I'm going to paint the feet. Well, the flippers. I guess that's what they're called. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. See? Just a few little brush strokes of that color I need, so... We're going to paint all the exposed areas in any areas where I have the shell and I may see it like a little tiny bit of wood, like over here on the corner, there's a little tiny area. So I'll paint that. This is all going to be resin down. It's going to be totally different looking when it's done. I know this may seem gaudy now, but it's not going to be gaudy in the end. Okay, so here we go. So I have the flash on, here he is all dry. I just want you to see how pretty that green is over that glass bead gel. And now we are ready for the next step, which is resin. Now for this, now you see right here where you can see the body a little bit. I am going to come in with some green paint and I'm just going to paint it a coordinating green once this is resined it's all going to be filled in you won't even notice it but anyway for the resin I'm using today it's going to be a new one from KS believe it or not here it is it's called lickety split ultra UV epoxy epoxy so this is a fast setting resin and this is perfect for doing something like a top coat or something that you don't have to really put a lot of thought in like this layer I'm going to put on the turtle 
it's going to be clear with maybe a little glitter in it very simple um so I don't need to have resin sitting in a cup for a long time. I'm going to mix up a batch. I'm going to dump it on. And what I love is in four hours, you can, three to four hours, you can pick this up. It's dried. And it takes 24 hours for a full cure. Absolutely love it. But I recommend if you're not comfortable using resin, you only get a 15-minute work time. So this may not be for you. But for people that use resin and are comfortable with it, absolutely go on KS Resin, use my code, uh, and try it out because I love it. Uh, if anybody has used Stone Coat in the, in the past, there's a product called Quick Coat. This is very similar to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this up, mix this up and don't forget the regular KS Resin is awesome, awesome, awesome price, free shipping, free shipping on this and all the qualities that you want in a fine art resin they all of their products have it even this fast setting one has the advanced uv resistance so your painting doesn't yellow over time so i'm going to mix some of this up and we're going to start working on this turtle Okay, so you can see I'm using copper tape. Um, I'll put this in my Amazon shop under uh, the tapes tab. Um, in my Amazon shop, I have a paint tab. I have supplies tab, resin art supplies, acrylic pouring supply tabs. So I have it all organized there for you for easy shopping. Um, but anyway. I'm using a copper tape and you can also use aluminum tape if you have it because this piece right here needs a barrier and with resin um, with resin a regular masking tape tends to peel off when you do a barrier like this so that's why I use the strongest adhesive I could find. So either aluminum tape or duct tape, something like that. Now, it's not a pretty sight, the barrier, but I don't care because A, I'm going to do some sanding in the end, and B, um, when I peel the tape off, it is going to have like a rigid look because the tape is rigid. The resin will copy whatever the tape is doing so that will make it look more realistic okay so I'm gonna mix up my resin now we're gonna dump it on here and then we're gonna let it set up I'm gonna peel the tape off and should be good to go so I poured some hardener into the cup always put the hardener in first because it's the thinner of the two parts and it will be easier to get it off of the side of the cup when mixing. You don't want to leave unmixed resin on the side of the cup. And what I did was I didn't measure, I just poured some resin into a cup um, and then what I did was I put with a little marker a little line there where it came up to so this way I don't need a measuring cup I know I just have to put that much resin into this cup now because it's an equal part resin and combine them together this resin is another one where like the rest equal parts of A and B and 
you mix it together for three minutes. So, I'm gonna get this cup off of this turtle actually so that it's level and I can make sure that I have the right amount in the cup of resin because it was not leveled there. I need a little bit more. Just right there, we'll do it. Okay. Add those two together. And mix for three minutes. Now, because this turtle has a barrier on it, the resin is not going to be able to flow off. It may leak in a couple of spots, which is not a big deal, but it's not going to be able to flow off like it normally would. And with resin, whenever it's contained in one area and it's deeper than, we'll say, two or three centimeters, it's going to cause an exothermic reaction. So what that is, is the resin starts to overheat because you have it contained in one area. And I always harp about when you're using resin for resin art to not leave large amounts in one area to separate it into little cups so that doesn't happen. In this case, I want it to happen. I want it to cure really, really fast. So I'm going to let that happen. It's not going to damage the resin in any way, but it will smoke a little bit and you'll think it's gonna catch on fire, but I promise it's not. So just mix for three minutes, okay? And make sure you scrape down the sides of the cup and you scrape off your stick multiple times through the mixing process. Okay, so resin is mixed. Now I have some craft glitter that I'm going to add into my resin. I'm gonna mix it throughout and that's gonna give it a nice sparkle. Let me see if I can show you this with the flash on. Oh yeah, look at that baby. Like liquid diamonds. So I'm going to dump the uh, resin all over the turtle and then we're gonna let it set up. Now this will have to be a two part video because of the fact that there's just a lot of steps to doing something like this. But we got it started so the second part of it will be on the back end of the next acrylic pour video. That's how we will do this. Sorry, I got some engines going by right now. Somebody must have said, hey, Tammy's playing with resin and trying to set it on fire. <laughs> All right, so just fill it in. If you didn't make enough and you feel like you need to do some more, do that on the second layer, especially when working with a fast setting resin like this one. But if you're using a regular resin uh, that has a normal work time, longer than 15 minutes, you can go ahead right now and mix up more and dump it right into this wet resin. You'll have plenty of time. Okay, so we've got that in there and I'm just going to spread it out just like so until the entire turtle is coated. Now you may be thinking, how do I know how much resin to make for something like this? If you go to artresin.com, they have a resin calculator. Now this is 22 inches long and I put in 22 inches in one box. Then for the width, I guesstimated uh, 12 inches, put that in the box, and I hit calculate. And let's say it told me to make 10 ounces of resin. I made 14 and dumped it all in. Because it's hard with a cutout, a wood cutout, to know exactly how much you need because it's not a square or a rectangle. 
or even a circle. So you kind of have to guesstimate on that front, but if you have some leftover resin, have another project sitting on the side or have some molds to throw it in. So now we're just going to torch it. I want to totally encase this turtle in resin, so this one layer will definitely not be enough. And we'll finish it up in part two. I'll show you how that is done. But for now, let's take a look at this baby, shall we? Now, what do you think about that? <laughs> oh, love it. Love it. I'm even thinking of decorating the belly a little bit. We'll see. But I needed to get that sparkle in there first. And boy, when I'm able to pick this up and move it around and show you, it's going to be bananas. So, my friends, that is officially the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell to the all settings so you get notifications of all upcoming videos. Uh, don't forget to check out the links for KS Resin, for color art. Um, everything is down in the description there. And check me out on social media. If you don't follow me on Instagram, head on over there and follow me. And um, also United We Pour with Tammy and Lisa on Facebook. Great group. And August, the challenge for August has just been released. So something fun to look forward to. I hope you all are having an amazing day and happy pouring.